If you've been on this side of the internet for any amount of time, you've probably heard the terms color accuracy, HDR, color space, contrast ratio. But what does all this mean when referring to a monitor and why is it important for photo and video editing? The reason I'm making this video is because my old ultra wide monitor broke. I don't know how, it just started doing this. So I took this opportunity to upgrade both my monitors to something that will be a little more color accurate for my editing. I ended up going with two almost identical Asus Pro Art monitors. They're both 27 inches, they're both 1440p, they're both color calibrated from the factory and I'll get into why that's cool. But there's one difference. One of these monitors is 60 hertz and one of them is 144 hertz and that's just because sometimes I also game at my editing setup. But the reason I went with these monitors is because they come color calibrated and they advertise a 100% coverage of the sRGB and Rec. 709 color spaces. So let me explain why color accuracy is so important. Color accuracy refers to how accurately a monitor can display the colors of a given image. The reason this matters so much for editing is because your image, whether it's a photo or video, is going to be seen across all types of screens from TVs to monitors to phones to tablets, and all of them are going to represent the colors of your image a little bit differently. If you edit an image on a non-color calibrated monitor with poor color reproduction, what's going to end up happening is you will edit the image to look good on your specific monitor. And that might look good to you, but as soon as you put it on your phone, on Instagram, or on your TV, then the colors can change dramatically and the edit can look really bad. For example, if your monitor specifically has a really low contrast ratio, then you are probably going to add more contrast in editing to make it look good. But in reality, if you take that image and put it on a very contrasty TV screen, now all of a sudden it's way too contrasty and you lose a bunch of detail in the shadows. Or maybe your monitor has a slight magenta tint to it that you don't really notice, but when you're editing, you're trying to get your photo looking properly white balanced and you end up making it more green tinted than it actually needs to be. Then when you show it to someone on a better color calibrated screen like an iPhone, the image looks green because you edited it on a magenta monitor. I could keep going, but I think you get the idea. Next, it's important to understand color spaces. Different formats display things in different color spaces. So it's important to know where your final product is going to live to know what color space to edit it in. There are a few important ones. One of the most widely used is sRGB. The sRGB color space is used to display images on pretty much the entire internet. So if you upload a photo to Instagram, it's going to be converted to an sRGB color space if it isn't already, and that's how people are going to view it. So it makes sense when you're editing your photo in Lightroom to be editing the photo in an sRGB color space so that it looks how it's going to look when you upload it on social media. Similarly, if you are printing your photos, you don't want to use the sRGB color space because it's not wide enough to capture all of the colors that you can print. So Adobe created a color space called Adobe RGB 1998. And this color space is meant to represent as many colors in the CMYK color palette that you possibly can in RGB so that you can view it on your monitor. This is a much wider color space that gives you more range of colors. So it'll more accurately show you what your photo is gonna look like printed. The ProArt monitors advertise 100% coverage of sRGB and Rec. 709, which means if these monitors are calibrated properly, theoretically, what your eye is seeing on the monitor is 100% accurate to what the colors of the image actually are. I use my monitor in the sRGB mode when I'm editing photos because 99% of my photos are not printed, they go on social media. And so I'm editing them and I can see exactly how the colors are gonna turn out. Then when I edit videos, I can switch the color space to Rec. 709 because although it's almost identical to sRGB, it's a little bit of a different color space that's used more widely for video. So how do you make sure you're buying a color accurate monitor? There are different levels to this. The Pro Art monitors that I got are relatively inexpensive, but if you want like the perfect best of the best color calibrated monitor, you could spend upwards of $5,000 on one, but we probably don't need that. I like the Pro Art monitors because they're color calibrated and tested in the factory. And when they send you the monitor, they actually mail you the little testing sheet to show you how it performed and how it's calibrated. You have to be careful with this kind of thing because there's a difference between being able to display a certain color space and being calibrated properly. You can have a monitor that theoretically can display 100% of the sRGB color space, but if it's not calibrated properly, then the colors could be off. So when you're shopping for a monitor, look to see what color spaces the monitor advertises that it covers 
and see what percentage of it covers them because a lot of monitors will cover like 93 or 95% of a color space. But it also helps to look up third party reviews and color calibration tests of these monitors because there can be a little bit of margin of error. Some people will test monitors that advertise 95% accuracy and really they're 82% accurate. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a pretty big jump and something you definitely wanna know before buying a monitor. And for best color accuracy over time, what you should really do is buy a color calibrator tool. This is something that sits on your screen and connects to your computer with software and runs a bunch of tests so that you can calibrate your monitor to be perfectly accurate. In a perfect world, this is something you would do every week or maybe every month to make sure that the colors stay consistent. Because calibrated properly from factory doesn't mean it'll be calibrated forever. Over time, the colors can shift a little bit. I have to say, I'm really happy with them so far. I think although my old ultra wide monitor was pretty good at representing colors, I've definitely noticed a difference. I think my old monitor was maybe a little bit more contrasty. It had more of like a picture profile set to it. I get a much more realistic kind of flat looking preview of what my images are gonna look like. There's no like added effects or added contrast or anything to make the image look better on my own screen. It's still an accurate representation of what I'm editing. And I think this is actually gonna make a noticeable difference in how I color grade my footage and how I edit my photos. The next thing I need to do is re-cable manage this mess because the cables have gone all over the place. So let me know if you want to see a video on that. But that's all I have for you in this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more. I am going to link affiliate links to these monitors down below. If you want to check out the specific ones I got, they're down there along with all my other camera gear. That's about it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.